Hello and welcome to this James May's Head Squeeze Hangout with the European Space Agency. I'm Martin Archer and we're joined by astronaut Paolo Nespoli. Hello Paolo. Hi Martin, hi everybody. So you mentioned a bit earlier about all the training that you went through and, and building up to your launches. Now we're only about eight and a half hours ahead of the next launch. So what is Luca Palmatano going to be doing right now? How do you think he's feeling? What's going through his head and what's he going to be doing? I'm, I'm guessing that it's now uh, probably finishing breakfast. Uh, there is this uh, typical Russian ceremony that when you leave for a trip, just before leaving the house, everybody sits down on the couch, like uh, you have all the time you, you, you have in the world. You sit down for about 30 seconds, like nothing is going to happen, uh, and then you go. This is to show that, that you're not in a rush. I mean, you're doing this and it's a nice uh, situation. So what are the differences in the launch procedures building up to launch itself? The, the amazing difference is that when uh, you are in quarantine uh, with the United States, in the United States you are really in quarantine. I mean, nobody can get even close to you for 10 meters or something like that. In Russia, it's a little bit more... Uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a quarantine, but it's okay. And and in fact, I'm gonna just tell you something. Do you know that when the astronaut uh, uh, on the Soyuz they they uh, go up the ramp, there is a little stair. Do you know that the head designer kicked them in their butt? I didn't know this. You get you get a kick in your butt. Like, come on, go like this. This is traditional. Uh, we've got another question in from YouTube for you, Paolo, uh, and this one is from Daniel Shum, and he wants to know, what do you do when you're bored on the International Space Station, if you ever are bored on the United Daniel, States? Uh, Daniel, I'm pretty sure if you would be on the space station, you will not be bored. Uh, I, I really had very little time, because every single moment I would have free, I would go to the cupola, and uh, start taking pictures. In an hour and a half, you actually go around the whole world and you see uh, all the season, winter, summer, autumn, and spring, and you see Siberia, Australia, South America, North America, and the desert. I mean, you see everything. Hi, Paolo. I was wondering what kind of experiences are scheduled for Luca during his Volar mission, especially in biology. Is there anything with plants or spiders or fishes? The um, Luca is going to do a lot of experiments. By the way, uh, everybody thinks that we go in space and we bring up our, our own experiments or something like that, but this is not the case. I mean, experiments are collected by the space agency. They are put into a bucket. There is a, There are many, uh, many um, meetings that are done just to make sure that the experiment is safe, it's ethical, and, and, and such and such. Uh, so, by the time you go in space, everything is already planned. And as I said, we are resources that are just sitting there as a manpower or guinea pigs to, to do what they, they, they give you. So you end up on uh, two missions to the International Space Station. Would you say the experience of the first time is very different from, say, the second time? The first one was on the space shuttle uh, uh, for a short duration, 15 days. Uh, the second one was a long duration uh, mission uh, taking off and returning with the Soyuz uh, spacecraft. When you go on a long duration mission, you need to become an extraterrestrial person. You need to forget you are a human. You need to, to adapt yourself to microgravity. And, and you, you can forget about this on the shuttle on a short duration mission, but if you stay longer, you need to get used to microgravity. And, uh, and this requires time, three, four, five, six weeks. But when you do that, when you transform yourself from a terrestrial person to an extraterrestrial guy, then is when you start working and really enjoying what's going on. Uh, we're going to go to another question from Joe uh, right now. So Joe, what did you want to ask Paolo? The second time. Yeah, I'm a big Star Trek fan, so I always think like the Federation of Planets, all those things are possible. So which boundaries do you think we need to cross to really become a space-faring nation, species? We really need to dream. We really need to think impossible things, otherwise we will never kind of break the barrier. Uh, I think uh, the universe is it's 
it's really big. Uh, just 4.2 light years away, which for astronomical distance is right under the corner, uh, it's like 160,000 years away if we take one of our spacecraft today. And this is just the, this, the little star cross, uh, near to us. So think about everything else. Stars that are at 10 light years, 100 light years, 1,000 light years, and we are still very close to Earth. We are still in our galaxy. I mean, we are not even crossed our galaxy. So I think uh, the step that we need to do, my opinion, we need to invent the teletransporter. The same thing they have in Star Trek, you know, Beam me up, Scotty! I just want to say thank you very much to our contributors for coming along. Thank you, Paolo, very much for answering all of those questions. And don't forget, of course, to subscribe to Head Squeeze if you want all right, the latest later. Um, videos and um, hopefully to keep track of the Valari mission. We'd love to talk to you again, Paolo. Oh!